Welcome to ADHD Support Talk Radio. My name is Tara McGillicuddy, and I am the host of ADHD Support Talk Radio. I am an adult ADD and ADHD productivity coach, and I am also the founder and director of ADDclasses.com. And at ADDclasses.com, we provide virtual support and education to people affected by ADD and ADHD. We offer free teleseminars. We have an extensive ADD audio library with more than 150 hours of courses, and we also offer more in-depth support programs. And you can learn more about ADDclasses.com by going to the website www.addclasses.com. And I'd also like to remind everyone that I will be beginning the Adult ADD Productivity Circle on March 21st. It's a three-month program. It's totally revamped and new, and you can find out more about that by going to adultaddproductivity.com. And with that, I would like to welcome back Lynn Idris to ADHD Support Talk Radio. In just a moment, we're going to be talking about self-awareness, overwhelm, and planning. So welcome back, Lynn. I'm so glad you've returned. Thanks, Tara. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. Before we get started talking about the topic, can you let our listeners know a bit about yourself and how they get in touch with you? Sure. Um, I'm an ADD coach. I specialize in working with professionals who are struggling to reach their potential due to things like you know, disorganization, time management, procrastination, and weak follow-through. So pretty typical ADD stuff. So what I do is I help my clients learn to, to do what works for them based on their strengths so that they can start firing on all cylinders in all areas of life, you know, so they can have more money and more time and more energy for the things that are important, not just crossing stuff off some to-do list. Uh, people can find more about me at my uh, regular website, which is www.coachingaddvantages.com. I'm also the founder of the Push Past Procrastination Program, um, which is a kind of a hybrid um, group and individual kind of a self-coaching program where you can rely on the group for support and accountability to bust through your struggles with procrastination once and for all. And you can learn more about that at www.addclasses.com slash PPP. We'll talk more about that later. Okay, great. So welcome. Yeah, this I thought this would be a topic that a lot of people can relate to. So where would you like to get started, Lynn? It, 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 it's, a, it's an odd topic for a lot of of you know, for a lot of my clients and a lot odd thing for them to think about initially, but it's a really important part of the coaching process. So when I'm talking about, you know, hitting the pause button or I'm talking about the power of the pause, we're talking about, you know, stopping, forcing yourself to stop and think, forcing yourself to stop and notice and think. And that's not something that's really natural for most of us with ADD. You know, when something's going wrong or when we're struggling with something, usually our kind of need your gut reaction is to work harder, you know, move faster. I always say pedal faster, right? Just, you know, more, 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 more. When the thing we we should do that would usually be the most beneficial would be to stop at that point, you know, if something's going wrong or if you're finding yourself overwhelmed or you're finding that you're, you know, you're not following through or you're not doing what you intend to do. Learning to pause, to hit your own pause button and kind of reflect and, and look at what's going on and be still is really powerful. It's a really powerful and really important thing that we work with our, our clients on in coaching, but it's really not a natural thing for, for many of us with ADD to do, you know, kind of on our own. No, I mean, we, we just want to go faster, get it done quickly, or not even want. I think it's just sometimes we just naturally fight and and we, the adrenaline kicks in. So, yeah, the pause is something that I think a lot of, I think just in general, human beings in this society are not used to, let alone when we have the ADHD brain. So I think Definitely. this might be something that is foreign to a lot of the listeners. What do you mean pause or stop? No, I just, I want to get it done quicker or I'm going to yell and scream and so, it's something, not that that's what you think to do, but that, you know, we react instead of pausing. Exactly. It, it, it you know, it really is not natural. We, we usually feel like we can't afford to pause. Like we can't take the time or that it's not, you know, it's not something that we should even consider. We just need to work harder. We need to work harder, 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 faster, faster, faster. And working harder isn't always the most effective approach. My husband is like the most like non-ADD person in the world. And he's, a, you know, he's an engineer. He's very logical and very linear. And he always says, you know, work smart, not hard. And it used to kind of make me mad when he would say that because it sounds, you mm-hmm. know, 
sounds critical and it's you know it that's also not natural for for me with my ADD brain but it you know that's what the pause enables you to do it enables you to work smarter and not quite so hard and it's a really important component of the self-awareness that we try to build in our clients in coaching so self-awareness is like a really critical part of of learning how to manage your ADHD and learning how to manage your ADHD by relying on your strengths, by relying on what you're good at, you know, what comes natural to you, um, what's already working for you in other areas, how you process information, you know, your natural flow of energy, you know, what time of day you're better at certain things or, you know, certain kinds of, of tasks are, you know, tend to be better for us at different times or in different, you know, kind of order. So understanding your own strengths and then learning how to apply them to the areas where you're struggling is really what you know, ADHD coaching is all about. But if you don't have the self-awareness to look at, you know, first of all, your own strengths and, and really to look at what's going wrong, you know, where's the hiccup? Where are things falling apart? You know, where are the, you know, where are the speed bumps? Where are the hurdles? Where are the, the glitches that you're running into that are causing the problem that you're experiencing right now? You know, if it's overwhelm, you know, you feel overwhelmed. That's just one of those kind of, you know, nebulous sort of, you know, vague feelings where we're, we're shut down. And I always say it's like the ADD quicksand. You know, we, we feel like it's really hard to move or we're absolutely positively stuck and frozen and we can't move at all, except, you know, to do things that are probably easier, easier or, or more interesting. So when you're in that overwhelm place, if you don't have the self-awareness to notice overwhelm before it gets you completely frozen, you're not going to be able to employ any of the tools or any of the things that you, you try to do or that we, we try to teach our, our clients in coaching. We try to work with them to develop. So that self-awareness piece, those, you know, the early warning signs, those indicators of, of what's going on for you, whether they're, um, you know, behaviors that you do or whether they're feelings, you know, that you feel in your body or, you know, actions that you take when you're struggling with certain kinds of things typically, if you don't have, have that self-awareness awareness and the ability to pause and look at it, you just keep trying the same things over and over again. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the life of somebody with ADD can be like the movie Groundhog Day, where we struggle with the same things over and over and over and over again. And we keep trying the same things over and over and over again, or even new things, but we don't seem to learn from our mistakes. We don't seem to learn from our successes, because we don't pause. We don't know how, or we haven't learned how to force ourselves to stop look around, see what's going on, you know, really analyze the situation and, and see what we can do to, to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, what's an example of pausing? Maybe it's, like, so simple that it, we're, we're making it sound harder. Is it as simple as just, like, stopping for a few moments, breathing and thinking? Um, can you give some examples? It really, it really is that simple. So what I, what I try to teach my clients to do, because this is not – natural. And I have ADD too. So, it, you know, I have to sort of be smacked in the face or really have something noticeable to remind me to pause because my natural inclination, just like, you know, every other client I work with is to just work harder. And, and that's how we, you know, we really wear ourselves out. That's how we end up, you know, at the end of every day exhausted with very little to show for it. You know, that, that's what, how, what we get when we just simply, you know, work harder or pedal faster, so to speak. So learning to pause, what I teach my clients is, you know, to look for external indicators, I call them. So look for things that, you know, things that you do, ways that you feel, behaviors that you tend to exhibit, things that you go to when you're, for example, when you're procrastinating. And this is kind of, you know, front of mind because I'm in the middle of the whole push past procrastination program thing. So what are your telltale signs that you're putting something off, that you're not doing what you intend to do, that you're not following through? Do you get a certain feeling? Like most of us have, a, we'll get like maybe tension in our neck or tension in our shoulders or jaw or something, or we'll have certain behaviors that we'll do, like, um, you know, like avoidant behaviors. You know, you go to the Internet, you find yourself spending more time checking email than you really need to. You know, it's a little bit different for everybody. But once you have identified what your indicators are that, something's awry. And depending on what the problem is, those indicators are going to be different. Like when I'm off my game with my task management system, I notice that I use sticky notes. And sticky notes are awesome, but they're not part of my system. They're not, you know, they're not like 
reliable and trustworthy. They're just kind of, you know, sort of an ancillary thing that it's good to get information from one point to another. They're not part of my system. But when I see sticky notes all over my computer monitor, for example, that's an indication to me to pause, to stop, and usually, yes, breathe, take a few deep sort of belly breaths, diaphragmatic breaths to sort of slow my heart rate, slow my brain, and think about what's going on. You know, I notice my indicator and my that's my cue to pause. So I always say, like, hit the pause button. I think it was David Gork um, from ADCA that, that coined the phrase pause, ponder, and process. Um, David with his alliterations, if you've ever heard him speak. But So you pause, you ponder, you think about what's going on, and you process it. You, you process what's going on so that you can come up with solutions. So if I see sticky notes, that's my indication to stop and think, you know, take a few breaths, calm down. What's going on here? What's falling apart with my system? If I find myself overwhelmed, same thing. You know, I notice my 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 avoidance behaviors. I notice my procrastination avo- behaviors. I notice my overwhelm behaviors or feelings. That's my cue to stop and pause. And what I'm doing is I'm I'm breathing. I'm slowing down my brain. I'm slowing down my heart rate. Literally, like calming down my body with the deep breaths, so that I can think and look at it as a problem that needs to be solved. You know, most of the stuff we struggle with really, you know, are just problems that need to be solved. And most of them have relatively simple solutions. But when we're constantly in that, you know, pedal faster, try harder place and in the, you know, the mindset of of blame and shame that I'm always harping on, you know, um, I'm a bad person, I'm lazy, you know, all that stuff. You don't see the solutions to the problem because you're just, you're literally pedaling faster, you know, with, without any clear direction on where you're going or why or, you know, you're just kind of, you're kind of flailing. So when you can learn to pause, you know, you you are increasing your self-awareness and you can course correct. You can change whatever you're doing. You can, uh, you know, change your behavior. You can change your approach. You can plan, you know, we can't plan if we don't stop and, you know, Planning is kind of a, you know, a dirty word for a lot of us with ADD. It's a concept most of us don't really like. We kind of bristle at. But really all it is 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 setting yourself up for success. So if your planning is just as simple as looking at your calendar and your to-do list to da- together, you can't do that if you don't pause. You can't do that mm-hmm. if you don't slow down and, and, and you know, think and take a, you know, take a, a moment to look at, you know, what needs to be done or, or you know, what needs to be changed. And it also gives you the ability to be aware of your thoughts. And that's a really important part of coaching that, you know, people don't talk about a whole lot. But, you know, being aware of your thoughts, how you're thinking about the things that you're struggling with, how you're thinking about yourself is, a you know, a really big obstacle for a lot of our clients with ADD. So, you know, that pause also allows you to catch those negative thoughts and really start to, to reframe things and really start to challenge things and really start to change the way you're looking at things. But you can't do any of it if you don't learn to pause. Mm-hmm. So important. It sounds like pausing, it's just, it's not like you're saying take a three-week vacation. You're saying stop and pause for a few moments. Yes. And Literally sometimes can, just seconds is all you need. Yeah. It's almost like, you know, when you're when you're talking about behavior management with kids and kids are doing something you don't want them to do, we talk about the pattern interrupt. Like you want to just interrupt them. And that's really all you're doing. It's a pattern interrupt mm-hmm. for yourself. You're stopping, stopping whatever's going on, whether it's, you know, procrastination, you know, stopping the stopping, you know, the the anxiety, the stress, the worry, the, you know, the the unproductive way you're doing something. You're stopping so that you can interrupt the pattern and change direction. Mm-hmm. And it's it's simple, but it's like you and I talk about, I think anytime you come on the show, it may not be easy. It could be challenging right. to get started. But I'm just thinking, you know, maybe to begin with, you have like a timer on your phone or an alarm a few times a day saying, have you paused today? Like something yes. to at least, you know, get it in your mind. And I'm sure working with a coach can be very helpful when you get in the habit of doing this. But this is one of these things that is easy. It's free. It's and it can be life changing to just pause and, you know, change things and do with that self awareness and correcting whatever, you know, isn't working the way you want it to. Definitely. It is it is it is free and it is simple, but it is not easy. One of the things that's, you know, the biggest struggle for those of us with ADD is remembering, you know, remembering to remember, remembering that you need to remember something. So those kinds of, of, you know, um, cues for yourself, whether, you know, whether it is a behavioral thing or, you know, some sort of an indicator in yourself that you notice that is your cue to stop, whether it is a, you know, a meditation chime or a a timer or a reminder that goes off every so often telling you to like, you know, stop. You also can't, 
see that you're doing something wrong or that something needs fixing or something needs to be done differently if you don't stop. So yeah. if you're, you know, if you're you're going down a rabbit hole, so to speak, or you're getting yourself completely distracted, you know, doing something, taking something to a degree it doesn't need to go, you know, with perfectionism or getting sidetracked in the middle of something, you know, by other things that are, are going on, having those cues, having those, you know, kind of external reminders to pause are also great opportunities for you to ask yourself, like, am I doing what I intended to do? And that mm-hmm. can be really powerful because, you know, more often than not, we're, n- we're not doing what we intended to yeah. do. You know, we've gone down some rabbit hole or some trail or, you know, clicked a link on the internet that's ended us up, you know, in a whole different area than we, than we meant to be. And it's so easy with ADD, you know, to get yourself off track. So that those creating those, you know, kind of forced opportunities to pause are absolutely, you know, those, those opportunities are absolutely crucial. And the more you do it, the more natural it becomes and the easier it is yeah. for you to notice when you need to pause on your own without the reminders. It becomes a habit. And I know what I feel yeah. like when I need to pause. Mm-hmm. I know I yeah. feel like I can hear my voice get louder. I can hear uh, my speech, my my the rate at which I speak gets loud, gets faster. So it's it's almost like I get wound up like a spring. And that when I hear that, and I can sort of see people's reaction, or I can hear the kind of the pitch of my voice goes up, I know I need to, to breathe. I know I need to stop and breathe and pause and think about what's going on, what's feeding that, so mm-hmm. that I can you know make some different choices and take a different path. And and you know the breathing is is really an important piece of it. You know, breathe and calm myself down and kind of slow down the motor a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, breathing is just so important even if you're not going into you know what's going on what's getting in the way just stopping and breathing for like 20 seconds taking three deep breaths in and out that in itself can like change your whole mindset and the way your body's working and the chemicals going on in your body and your brain that's even before getting into you know thinking about you know what's going on what you need to change but you've talked a lot about the pause and how beneficial it is and like, I just want to challenge everyone who's listening today to start pausing more, even if it's just stopping and breathing, and even if you're not going to, like, what's getting in the way, but just stopping and, and breathing. It's it's so important. It really is. And, it's and again, it's really not a natural tendency for us. So it's it can be really powerful when you start to create that habit. You start to, to create sort of, in a coachy way to say it, the, the space for yourself that, that you create when you pause, you know, whether or not your intention is to, to analyze what's going on, it happens sort of naturally. We tend to be great mm-hmm. problem solvers. So when you can create that kind of that slowed down space for yourself for 30 seconds and breathe, you know, it's a lot easier to see what's going on. It's a lot easier to see what, you know, needs to be changed, to, you know, see what needs to be addressed or, you know, to, to take a different a different tact and to really, like, you know, get out of your own head. <laughs> That's one yes. of the most important things we address, you know, in coaching. And, and you know, in, in the Push Past Procrastination Program, that's a big piece is learning how the, you know, the head piece, the mind piece, the thinking and, you know, our our tendency to get stuck up there. <laughs> I always tell my clients, yep. like, your biggest obstacle is often the one between your ears. You know, that's what the pause facilitates. It enables you to kind of get out of your head, and the head is where you're having all your trouble. It's. I had a client tell me yesterday um, she's been spending way too much time in her own head, and it's not a safe place to be without adult supervision. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking was right. my, own, yeah. my own head is a very scary place. It, it's it can so be. It's so for me to get out of it, whether it's, you know, talking back and forth with my coach, writing something on paper, or just simply breathing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Getting out of my head more often is beneficial. <laughs> yeah, oh, for everybody, yeah. right? <laughs> you know, there's great things that go on in there, but sometimes it can be pretty scary. And, it and can get, be, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like the cage full of now, gerbils at the pet store, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, we are getting towards the end of today's show. Are there any final thoughts that you'd like to share about pausing? And um, can you give out your contact information once again, Lynn? Sure. I, I The you know, again, the pause is not natural, but it's so important. And it's really like a, a fundamental sort of a foundational thing that we work on clients with in coaching. So start to, to see what you can do to create some space for yourself to pause, some sort of, you know, reminders for yourself, um, whether you, you know, set a vibrating timer, you know, hourly that goes off and reminds you, like, you know, 
to stop and to breathe and to think about think you know just think about being think about what's going on and you know make sure you're where you need to be kind of it's you know just an opportunity to, to check in with yourself it's it can be really powerful um, and it can really be a game changer you know in the long run Again, my name is Lynn Idris. You can find out more about me at uh, my website, which is www.coachingaddvantages.com. Um, I have links on my website with lots of great information, blog articles, all kinds of different things. And you can contact me through my website as well for a complimentary phone consultation if you're interested in coaching. I also um, am the founder of the Push Past Procrastination Program, as I said. You can find out more about that at addclasses.com slash PPP. And I'm going to offer um, a coupon, a 10% off coupon, with the code ADHD support. So ADHD will be capitalized, and the S in support will be capitalized. And that'll be a 10% off coupon off any products or programs on my website. And that you know, learning to pause can can change your life. So I hope you'll yes. I hope you'll take our take our um, take our challenge, take the pause challenge, and see what kind of a difference it can make for you. Thanks. And there's three P's in the ADD classes dot com slash PPP. I think you only gave two, but I, I, I could have heard it wrong. But yeah. I don't know. Push I should have heard it wrong. procrastination. Yeah, PPP. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. P. <laughs> okay. So thank you so much, Lynn, and thank you everyone for listening. And oh yeah, just want to remind everyone to stop by addclasses.com on March 29th. We have a free tele seminar about the best non-medication treatment for ADHD. And to sign up. Just go to addclasses.com. It's a free teleseminar with a one-week replay. And my productivity circle is beginning on March 21st, and you can learn more about that at adultaddproductivity.com, or you can go to addclasses.com and click on the programs link. So thanks again, Lynn. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Have a great day.